Good evening, everyone. Thank you all very much for coming. Uh, my name is Will Tanner. For those that don't know me, I'm the director of Onwards, uh, and uh, you're all here this evening because, uh, as you know, we like to hold uh, events like this to bring uh, young people and uh, kind of senior politicians together to talk about oh God, uh, political ideas oh God. Um, and and hopefully to bring a bit of optimism and hope uh, to political space yeah, at a time yeah, when it's yeah, 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 not yeah. always that optimistic <laughs> and hopeful. <laughs> Um, the 22 uh, went really well this afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> um, so, so Onward was set up just over a year ago uh, to uh, renew the centre right for a new generation uh, by coming up with uh, new, uh, optimistic, modernising ideas into reaching out, reaching out to new groups of people. So tonight, I hope at least fulfils one of those categories, and maybe we can come up some, with some new ideas as well. Um, I'm completely thrilled uh, that this evening Guy Opperman has agreed to speak. So, for those of you who don't know Guy, and you're about to hear from him and get to know him a little bit better, um, Guy is a, a long-standing MP, incredibly well respected across uh, across the house. Actually, not just in his own party. Indeed, uh, I've been to events with. Uh, uh, with shadow ministers uh, present uh, and kind of supporting your initiatives. Um, and uh, uh, the, the kind of little known fact about Guy is that he was a jockey before he was a member of parliament. Uh, Matt Hancock is famous for riding a winner at Newmarket, but uh, Guy Hoffman was there before him and uh, has probably ridden faster and better. Um, uh, <laughs> There's a leadership joke somewhere. Yes. <laughs> I'll yeah. work on that one. Yeah, we will indeed. We're just about to have the Grand National of Leadership races. So uh, perhaps Guy's well placed. Um, but, uh, but Guy is um, also uh, currently the Pensions Minister, he's previously been uh, a whip uh, and engaged in uh, kind of a variety of different roles in uh, British politics and brings always great energy, new ideas and just a, basically a desire to get stuff done. He was a kind of he's a leading light in Women to Win, um, he's um, uh, been incredibly active and energetic in the Parliamentary Conservative Party. So I'm completely thrilled that you're here this evening, Guy. Um, the way in which this evening will work is I'll hand over to Guy to give five, ten minutes of his thoughts on where we are politically, some big ideas that he's got for uh, for, for policy, and then we'll just have a conversation. So we'll do Q&A, um, but that will be both ways. So I, I'm going to ask Guy to ask you guys some questions, and I'll ask you guys to ask Guy some questions as well, so that we have a bit of a conversation rather than just a transmission. Um, so without further ado, over to Thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you for giving up your Wednesday evening. Uh, so this, this is a totally unscripted and there's no Chatham House. You can live tweet if you wish to do so. And I'm going to try and answer every single question as if none of you are journalists and I'm going to trust you all implicitly. There are bits of the 1922 <coughs> committee uh, with relation to the Prime Minister I can't talk about, but pretty much everything else is on the table. You can ask me about leadership, you can ask me about whatever you want to ask me about going forward. So, uh, Will is right, it is true, hard to believe, I am a very fat former jockey. And most people do what the gentleman did at the back there when Will announced that I was a jockey, who turned to their neighbour and go, he looks quite large. <laughs> uh, so it is true that I rode against the great Tony McCoy, the greatest jockey of all time who rode up to me uh, when I first was riding against him and he said, you, I thought this is quite exciting, the greatest jockey of all time was going to talk to me. You know, it's about like, like playing tennis with Bedera. And he comes up to me and he goes, you, stay out of my way. I was just quite pleased that he actually talked to me. The fact that he, he told me to stay out of the way was not a problem. So uh, I was a jockey, it didn't work out. I got crushed by a horse, broke 14 bones. I uh, lost my spleen, it's quite easy to lose, but eventually they had to cut it out of me. And long and short of it is I became an MP in 2010. And I suppose my <coughs> message today would be, to start off with, uh, the darkest hour is always the hour before the dawn. So if in any way you are a Conservative, and if you're a practical, liberal, um, fiscally robust, socially liberal Conservative like I am, then you are thinking things are pretty bad right now. And by the way, the uh, opinion polls are probably not wrong. The European elections are going to be messy, difficult, and really no fun. However, I genuinely believe there is still massive potential to win the next elections. I believe there is massive potential to renew in government. Hardest thing to do. We are, let's be blunt, year nine of the marriage. Uh, we've all got to know each other quite well. We had a five-year marriage with, in a coalition, and then we've suddenly decided to go off on our own and we've stumbled a bit as we've gone along. So renewing of it is desperately difficult. And the truth is, you don't think we're doing anything. Let's be bluntly honest, 
if I was if I was to sit you down and say, do you think we're doing much bar Brexit? You'd be going, not really. It seems to be if I turn on the telly, that's all it is, and that's just not the case. So uh, I run the pensions portfolio. I'm going to give you three very quick examples of what I believe are transformational change. So let me give you the first one, which is, so all of you, who here has got a banking app? Right, pretty much all of you. And which, by the way, 10 years ago, you wouldn't have had, just didn't exist. Which means you are engaging with your bank account and your bank manager on a daily basis. I run the pensions portfolio. We are attempting to bring all of your savings, every single thing, to your mobile phone, so that just as though you look at your banking app, you should look at your savings, your pensions, and everything else on one data device between the time it takes to go from one tube stop to another. I think that's a really cool thing. It empowers it, it brings down the cost, it creates competition, and it genuinely transforms your life. Secondly, if you haven't read Times Red Box this morning, uh, then I would urge you to do so. I wrote a piece in uh, Times Red Box this morning. So, the people who've got most money in this country are parking aside uh, the amazingly extravagant onward um, who are doing so well, uh, is, uh, and Richard Branson, taking those two people out. The long and the short of it is this, is that the most people with money are your pension funds. We are talking of trillions of pounds of money, and all of you, almost every single one of you, will have an auto-enrolled pension. 8% of which you're saving on an ongoing basis, of which you have, unless you are really discerning, no idea what you're doing with it. It just disappears out of your bank account and it, you're not sure what happens there. You're not engaged with it. But wouldn't it be cool if your auto enrolled pension, which is being managed by uh, some nice people in the city of London, uh, should actually be being, being harnessed to solve the things that you're most worried about? Now, the things you're most worried about, aside from you know dodgy boyfriends and things like that, the things you're most worried about, by and large, if you're here and you like Onward, would be the environment, housing costs, and availability of housing, job security on a long-term basis, how will I live longer term? Perfectly legitimate things that all of us, frankly, care about. So these are things rightly that Onward have identified in James's report, rightly are genuine issues. And what are we trying to do about them? So, wouldn't it be cool if government were mandating that your pension fund should be investing and taking due account of all environmental matters and climate change matters in the way in which they invested your pension fund? And not only just investing it in the right way, but also then backing fintech, innovators, renewable companies with significant amounts of cash that then you actually end up with uh, net zero by 2050. That would be really cool. Well, by the way, that's what we're doing. You wouldn't know about it unless you read Time Joe's Box this morning. Uh, but you, we have done that and we are doing it. There's no cut through there because, of course, Brexit is taken away. Similarly, housing. Why is it your pension fund? It, it sits there investing in what are called gilts or other things. Why couldn't it be doing key worker housing? Why couldn't it? We all accept that if you're a farmer, a policeman, a doctor, uh, or a nurse in particular, or a social care worker, you can't. You can't get a house in the M25. You guys can't get a house in the M25. And if you're also a nurse, you're doubly struggling. My bottom line is this. Wouldn't it be cool if they were actually investing on a long-term basis as part of a balanced portfolio to get you a situation where you had genuine opportunities and they were supporting housing in your local area? Again, that is what we're trying to consult on to make happen and to do things in a different way. So that, in a nutshell, those are what I would call the cut-through policies which are trying to fix the problems that James and Onward have rightly identified, but we've got to sell them. As conservatives, we have to sell them, we have to get through the problems that we're in, and clearly we are in some problems, and we have to sell them in a different way, and that's going to require better communication, better ideas, certainly a different leader, and things are going to have to be very different. And I will just, I'm going to finish, and then we'll go on to a few more bits and bobs on the type of party I want to be part of, and the type of party that I think we have to be part of if we're going to win. And there is a risk and a danger that this could be a party that is taken over by the ERG, that it becomes a strongly no-deal party that is a, uh, a party that is obsessed with Brexit in circumstances where, trust me, that is not the thing that the vast majority of the population are obsessed with. It really is not. They are interested in about their job, their schools, their hospitals, uh, the day-to-day -day living of that, which uh, they affects them on a day-to-day basis. I have surveyed my constituents every single month for the last 
uh, nine years of doing this job, and I can assure you Potholes comes top or second on every single occasion. I do represent <laughs> the largest constituency in this country with an awful lot of roads which are not in great shape, but it is still true that Europe has come nowhere near the top five. The reality is, I believe, we have to have a one nation uh, type of conservative to lead us, and we need to be a one nation party. And to that extent, again, if you haven't read today's sum, uh, there is the principles set out on uh, by Damien Green. Uh, again, if you go to my Twitter feed, I have um, set out what the One Nation Caucus, there's about 75 of us in the House of Commons already, who are coming together with a group of principles and about 10 key values that we believe that we should stand behind to ensure fundamentally that we are a party of the centre ground. Because the vast majority of the people are in the centre ground. There is a cohort to the far left, we know them as momentum. There is a cohort on the far right. Some of them are in other political parties, some of them are in ours. But the vast majority of members of parliament and uh, frankly the people are in the centre ground. And traditionally, the centre left or the centre right wins. We need to be the centre right party that occupies the centre ground, has one nation policies at which we can then articulate them, communicate them better and win going forward. That's what I'm about, that's why I'm here, that's why I support the great work that Onward is doing, and that's what I also think we can do. I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever. Thank you.